I thought this would be a fun video to make, one that would boost my channel a bit more and give it some Lovecraft related content. These films are not direct adaptations of any of Lovecraft's stories like uh, Reanimator or From Beyond, but rather these are the films I feel best exemplify what Lovecraftian means. Or rather, these are films I could imagine Lovecraft approving of or even having thought of. There are of course films which are adaptations of Lovecraft's works, but those I'm excluding from this list. That I can do another day. Oh, and there won't be any spoilers in this video. Because I won't give any spoilers, some of my summaries of these films will make them sound like generic horror films, but you'll just have to trust me that I know what Lovecraftian horror is when I see it. Let's get the obvious one out of the way. The Thing is my favorite film by far, and the one that I think best highlights what Lovecraft was all about. And in this case it was highlighting the theme of man's insignificance compared to the horrific entities with which we share the cosmos with. Basically it's set in Antarctica in the 1980s. A research station is confronted with a very bizarre scene. A helicopter is attempting to destroy a husky. Or is that a Malamute? I always forget the difference. With extreme determination. It fails and the drama seems to be over. The dog lives but it is very obvious that something is off with this dog and that the apparently insane Norwegians in the helicopter which were trying to kill it were actually sane and were trying to do the right thing. The beauty of the film is how it shows humanity simply descending and being destroyed as the story progresses. A top of the line research team is whittled away and reduced to a panicked pack of fear riddled humans in the face of a terror that was utterly unthinkable you know a few moments ago in the story's timeline. The replay value of the film is also extremely high because you will always pick up things you didn't quite notice in the first part of the film. Add to that it has a wonderful ending which isn't seen that often nowadays given that Hollywood has this tendency to shit out sequel after sequel. The film is made by John Carpenter and stars Kurt Russell as well as some other names and faces you might recognize like Keith David and Wilfred Brimley. The creature effects by Stan Winston are truly disgusting and horrible but in the good way and they really highlight just how awesome real effects are compared to CGI. The film was inspired by a novella by John W. Campbell of which I did a full review of. You can check it out here. You gotta be fucking kidding. If you want a full review of this film then I've already done that so you can check that out here. But in short this is a shorter film about a guy who rips off his average white collar company in a similar way to that film Office Space. He makes his escape from the city into the wilds of an undetermined part of the US and picks up a distress call from a nearby radio station. What follows is a descent into madness and human destruction, done really really well. I love this film because once again it highlights these themes as seen in all the other films I've mentioned, but here it really literally depicts human destruction in a gory manner. I'm not a gore hound, I don't like it much but it's done quite well here in, in an unnerving way. I also like how minimalist the film is, there's no unnecessary scenes, it gets right to the point, there's no wasting any time with character building because remember in a Lovecraftian story the character isn't really important, all they have to do is, set, is to symbolize humanity and that's what's done here. And also the film is only 40 minutes long so that's a nice change of pace considering that Lovecraft actually wrote short stories so is a 2 hour film really necessary? Not really. Anyway go check out my full review of it. No fucking way. This was a film I instantly loved even before I knew who the HP Lovecraft was or anything about Lovecraftian horror. I must have been a young teen when I first saw it and I remember seeing it come on in the early morning on TV and when I finished watching it I was completely blown away by it. The big impression I got from this film was a sense of complete terror about the situation that the characters were in. Basically it goes like this, there are two sisters who go to visit the snowy quaint American town but lo and behold it is dead and deserted. But there are no bodies, no signs of violence but also no signs that there was an evacuation, a fire, a disease or anything like that. But after a while they do find a body but it's dead in a way that seems impossible. Eventually they meet up with some cops and together they slowly discover signs of some horror that should not be possible. I strongly hope that when you watch this film you imagine yourself as one of the people in this town because that's where the real horror of this film shines through. The film does feature a big bad entity like in most good Lovecraftian stories, but despite being told what the monstrosity is eventually in the film, even at the end of the film we have a dread feeling of uncertainty exactly what it was. 
We are given plenty of fuel for the imagination to speculate what it really was, but not so little information that we feel cheated at the end. The filmmakers really got a good balance of that. The power of the thing is made quite obvious quickly, and it's clear that, like with any good Lovecraftian entity, there's no amount of guns or bombs that are going to help you, which really highlights that feeling of hopelessness. The film has a pretty strong cast with Ben Affleck, Liev Schreiber, Rose McGowan and Peter O'Toole. Everyone plays their roles really well, especially Liev Schreiber, he's such a funny character. Hey, you wanna see something? I really really like this film. Why? Because it's a modern horror film made in 2013 I think, but it isn't one of these generic modern horror films with the usual jump scare bullshit. And then it isn't the same type of modern horror film with the same tired, creepy imagery, with the same palette swap characters who you don't really give a shit about. Okay, well the film isn't a 10 out of 10, but damn, it's a nice change of pace. Plus, the film is most definitely Lovecraftian. The characters even discuss Lovecraft together, which kind of makes the film feel like at that moment is breaking the fourth wall. Have, have you ever read any H.P. Lovecraft? No. Wrote a story in about 1930 something or other. It was about a scientist who created an electronic device, a giant tuning fork. It emitted a, a resonance wave that um, well, it stimulated anybody who was nearby, their, their pineal gland, allowing them to experience planes of existence outside the scope of accepted reality. Basically, this film is a modern, loose, but not too loose adaptation of from beyond. It's loose enough that it feels fresh and original, but not so loose that it feels like it's losing the Lovecraftian track, you know, it's not going off the rails or something. If you don't know the story of From Beyond, basically it involves a scientific project that attempts to aid humans to see beyond our realm. Not to see into far off realms, but ones that exist parallel to us, with us, but outside of our perception. And of course this doesn't bode well for us when we do actually see these realms. The Lovecraft story used a machine as a plot device, but in this film they use drugs. Like with The Thing and Phantoms, it has this underlying idea of humanity discovering something extremely unpleasant, and something that cannot be solved with the liberal application of lead. There's a lot of creepy imagery in this film as well, and a lot of scenes where the color contrasts are really done well, it really makes the film stand out and pop visually. The film stars some okay actors, none of whom I've really known. Uh, before besides Ted Levine. Ted Levine stars in this film and he is epic. He is such a fun character to watch and sometimes it feels like he is an ally to the main protagonist. Sometimes he feels like he's actually in on it the whole time and that he's actually a villain trying to aid the the downfall of people in general. But most of the time it's just like wow what a guy. You kind of want to have a beer with him and just talk about life in general. Out of all the five films I've mentioned on this list, I actually think this one is the most fun to watch. It's something new, something fresh, but it's still typical well, Lovecraft. It's a work in hey, make them, make them lesbians. Really? Burmese throat singing lesbians. I... Now this film isn't a horror film. In fact, it stands out from all the others because of that. The ending, I can say without spoiling too much, is one that I found to be astounding, optimistic, even beautiful. Unlike the other films, I came away from this film with a feeling of awe rather than of dread thoughts that the other films inspired. In short, this film shows astronauts going to Europa, which is a moon of Jupiter they suspect holds life. Not just boring microscopic bacterial life, but legit creatures. Obviously, the film isn't just 90 minutes of nothing until they reach their goal. Things go wrong, which is a given in any space film. Some characters face tough decisions morale gets damaged, and so on. When they do eventually arrive at Europa, that's when the film really stands out from all the other sorts of space exploration films. I should mention that this film is shot in a found footage slash documentary type style. It cuts back and forth, mixes in realistic looking news reports, scientific charts, images like you'd expect from the NASA website or something. So all of the things I included in this video are all straight from the film, despite it looking like I added stuff from Cosmos or something like that. Some people hate this type of stuff, but I thought it worked well. Being a space film, you might wonder if it's the realistic type of space film, like Gravity, or the bullshit kind of space film, like Armageddon. Well, it's the realistic type, and this is a good thing because it presents an idea that humanity really could realistically tackle one day soon, even in our lifetimes maybe. Europa is not unreachable. It really is thought to have an ocean beneath its icy surface, and life could very much be a possibility there. Not only that, but the actors that are portraying the astronauts play them extremely well, so it's all taken 
in a very serious sense. Because of all these things, you could have this feeling after watching the film, thinking, yeah, this could happen. Lovecraft isn't always about misery and gloom about man's position in the cosmos. He saw a lot of beauty and fascination in life, and particularly in astronomy and scientific discovery. That is what this film tackles quite well, and all while still having an ending that has a Lovecraftian taste. I think he would have enjoyed this film, and if it's good enough for him, it's good enough for my list. So those are my five films. There are at least five other films I could have mentioned, but I like to keep it just to five films. And I'm sure some people will think I'm wrong for including some of these films and then omitting some of the others. Feel free to crucify me in the comment section. Anyway, thanks for watching my video. Cheers.